Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's Autodesk Virtual Academy session. Um, I'm Nigel Mbaik, one of the application engineers here at Kativ, and uh, we also have Richard Sanchez helping us with our presentation today. So today we're going to be going over um, some Autodesk cloud services. So um, let's go ahead and start today's session with a question. Have you used the cloud before? Um, so yes, no, maybe. Um, some of you may have actually initially answered no to that question, um, when in actuality, we all use the cloud every day. Uh, some of the most commonly used web applications exist only because of the cloud's ability to uh, store and share information. So things like file sharing, music streaming, and social media, um, those are all enabled by the cloud. Even large businesses use programs like NetSuite and Salesforce to increase productivity in a larger scale. Um, actually, we're all using the cloud right now um, using GoToWebinar. And uh, for those of you who are watching this later on YouTube, hello. Um, you're also using a cloud-enabled service as well. So what does the cloud help you with in regards to your Autodesk programs? Well, um, that's what we're going to go over today. Hopefully, this presentation go is going to go ahead and answer a couple of questions. Uh, one, what is the cloud? Two, what services are there from Autodesk that use the cloud? Three, why should we even use it? Um, what are the benefits of using the cloud? And four, how do I go about using it? How do I actually operate the services in the cloud? So first, uh, what is the cloud? So the term cloud is pretty vague. Um, you hear it a lot in marketing terms. Um, there's things like iCloud, um, cloud-based software, et cetera, et cetera. But um, in these specific circumstances, um, in terms of the Autodesk stuff. The cloud is a web-based entity that enables the use of nearly limitless resources to compute, store, and share data across the net. So uh, here's a few examples of how Autodesk has utilized the cloud in order to enhance the customer experience. Um, one being cloud rendering. So designers, architects, and engineers can produce high-quality renderings very quickly um, and even produce more than one at a time, which is really cool. Um, two, reality capture. Um, this is capturing geometric data from like, physical objects uh, through the use of photos to create 3D models. And the program that Autodesk utilizes this in is uh, Recap 360. And uh, we also have simulation, uh, where you can do complex computation in the cloud versus your local machine. So instead of doing all of the hard work on your actual computer, you can do it up in the Autodesk cloud. Uh, this is available for both CFD and sim mechanical. So you can do your flow simulations as well as some of your stress and fatigue calculations with that functionality. So these are only a few of the offerings from Autodesk in regards to the cloud. Uh, there are dozens of other enabled programs that you can have access to, uh, those being A360, Fusion 360, um, and there's plenty of other 360 programs that you can use. So uh, now that we've covered the what, let's move to the why. So in college, I ran multiple CFD simulations looking at drag in different versions of Formula Car nose cones, uh, uh, particularly this car's nose cone. So this is actually me driving. Um, each simulation consisted of millions of elements, and they took tens of hours to converge. That's if, if they even did converge and didn't overload and crash the workstation. I'm using the word workstation here a little generously. Uh, the computers we had access to in college were pretty bad, and uh, they crash all the time, I'm sure. Some of you have had that same problem before. Uh, while such simulations were running, uh, the computer was rendered completely useless, uh, having spent nearly 100% of its computing power to run the CFD application. We couldn't even open email. We couldn't open Word documents. Um, it's pretty much just sitting there being a vegetable until the CFD simulation was completed. By use of uh, the cloud, this problem gets eliminated as the computing power is being utilized, utilized away from a local system. And so you can stay productive, even uh, running multiple simulations at once. So what Autodesk, the cloud capabilities allow you to do is you can send multiple simulations to the cloud at once and have them all running at the same time, which is something you definitely couldn't do on um, most local workstations uh, quickly and efficiently. So we have cloud credits. And what cloud those are is um, they're the universal unit of measure for all of Autodesk cloud offerings. So essentially, they're the dollar for all of the uh, cloud services. Uh, you can get them by being associated with a current subscription to certain Autodesk products, uh, some of those being the suites, among other things. Uh, as a gift, Autodesk gives you 100 starter cloud credits that never expire, and uh, they can be used for nearly all of the available services. To receive these, you must have an Autodesk account portal 
which some of you already have by being contract managers and software coordinations on your respective maintenance and subscription contracts. This is where you download your software, do all of that stuff. Um, once you run out of your 100 initial starter credits, uh, you could buy more through the Autodesk store online, or you can contact the Autodesk reseller uh, like us here at Kativ, and we can definitely get that taken care of for you. In regards to the cost, uh, one cloud credit is equivalent to one dollar. So um, you can do that, but you can only buy them in multiples of 100. So um, now that we know what it is, what offerings Autodesk provides, some of the benefits of using the cloud, and uh, what you need to start using services, uh, let's move on to the live demonstration. So let's uh, go ahead and start off with collaboration. So this is uh, Autodesk A360. What A360 is, it's a collaboration tool that helps engineers and designers view, share, and review uh, 2D and 3D designs all in one central workspace. So you can kind of consider this like a Dropbox of sorts, but for Autodesk specific things. Uh, so actually A360 is free to use, and um, you can just sign up um, using A360 website. You get five gigabytes of storage um, to share data among your colleagues, and uh, there are apps in all major app stores that allow you to access this on your phone, tablets, and other devices. So you can just go into the Apple App Store, download the Autodesk A360, and uh, go ahead and jump in here. So uh, this is my personal A360 portal. Uh, I have A360 team, and that's a little bit different. It has actually a maintenance cost per month, um, but the base is still the same. It's used for collaboration. Um, and here you can share projects with colleagues. You can go ahead and share those um, through this. You can go ahead and send them an email or send this link to them. Uh, and uh, you can view 3D models, and uh, you can do a lot more other stuff. So actually, you can view 3D models. If you go ahead and click one of these, I already have it open over here. Um, you can view your 3D model as you would an inventor or uh, whatever CAD software you're using. You can go ahead and actually mark up these so you can put red lines all over this if you want to put a big no. No, I don't want to see this. Um, these markups are visible by anyone you have shared the folder with, which is very cool. Um, and so anyone can do this and then save this. It'll get shown to everyone else. So um, one might ask, why even use A360 when you already have something like Box, Google Docs, SharePoint, Vault, etc.? Well, um, A360 was built and designed with um, the Autodesk using engineer in mind. So while Dropbox and other programs might be efficient in regards to moving Word documents and even Excel spreadsheets around, um, they're not optimized for 3D CAD files and other files of the larger nature. So like I said, A360, you know, you can even do markups from anywhere um, via your smartphone or tablet. So let's go ahead and um, look at cloud credits. So this is your Autodesk account portal. Well, this is actually my Autodesk account portal. You can go to manage.autodesk.com, uh, log in, and go through this. Uh, for those of you who are contract managers, this is the same place where you get your serial numbers and your updates to your programs and your download links. So let's go ahead and sign in here. So up here is uh, your cloud credit balance. So as you can see, I have 100 starter cloud credits because um, I'm associated with the current subscription contract. Clicking through this gives me an idea of how many I have used, how many I have remaining, as well as it gives me some information about my A360 which is you know, how much storage I have remaining on my drive. So actually, um, I have 25. Most of you will see five there. Uh, as I stated before, uh, the cloud credits are the universal currency for cloud-based functions. And uh, now that we've seen where you can access this, how many you have left, let's go ahead and move on to the application side of things. So um, on a simulation, uh, this is where it gets kind of interesting in regards to using these services. Uh, simulations can consist of seemingly endless iterations, uh, and oftentimes they crush your computer's productivity. So particularly in CFD, when you have millions of elements, uh, simulations can take up to days to complete on a normal workstation, uh, depending on their complexity. So actually, we had a customer call in, and he was talking to me about how one of his particular CFD simulations uh, went for over 30 hours, and he didn't even get the result that he wanted. So that's kind of unfortunate. He had to run another one after that. Like I stated before, the way that CFD and Sim Mechanical use the cloud has changed um, in 2017 releases. In these new releases, you can go ahead and just click the cloud as your computing computer instead of the, the local workstation. Um, within the program, you don't have to send anything up into the cloud. It'll, do, it'll show all of that stuff in your job manager, um, and it'll give you the same exact results as if you were to do it on your local workstation. 
So that's that. Let's move on to rendering. So let's start with AutoCAD. So in regards to rendering, you can do this in multiple places. Um, you can do it within program through AutoCAD, Fusion 360, Revit, or you can do it um, via the online render. So to do this in AutoCAD, you go ahead and go ahead and go into your Visualize tab. Um, this might not initially be there. You might have to turn it on. Just turn it on from the tabs. This gives you all of your options for your background, your lights, whichever lights you set up. You can do the render on your local workstation through here. But if you want to do this in the cloud or view your Autodesk gallery in the cloud, you can go through here, which is your A360 tab. Uh, click Render in the Cloud. What this will do is it will upload the drawing, send it to the cloud, and uh, you can view it on the online rendering services. If you want to look at all of those, um, you can click this within program. This is the same in um, Revit as well. And uh, it'll go straight to the online gallery, which is here. So it'll bring you to your gallery. Um, I don't have very much stuff in here, but some people have tabs. So the second way you can go ahead and render files is by uploading them directly to the rendering service. So what you do is you can select a file here. Um, and the supported product files are AutoCAD and Fusion 360. So unfortunately, you can't just take your inventor files and throw them in here and do that. You just like this, and then you just follow to the next page. So actually, I have that open here. So from here, you can select which camera views you want, uh, which environment you'd like this to be, the render quality, standard and final, format of the file that you want. Over here is where it gets a little more important, where you have your image size, how many megapixels this image is going to be. Um, you can go anywhere between a quarter of a megapixel to something 16 or even greater if you use a custom size. And uh, what that will do is, from here, it will calculate how many credits these actually require. Um, they actually don't cost anything for us, um, but if you were to do it, it usually costs um, something in the neighborhood of one cloud credit per megapixel. That's not a hard metric that can change based on the particular model you're using. Um, so this will tell you how many you use, or you're going to use when you run this. This is how many you have, and this is how many you'll have after it's completed. Uh, the estimated wait time is uh, how long it'll take, like what place you are in line in terms of the queue for this. So there. You know, people all around the world using this service. So as you can see here at the bottom, running something like this has massive, massive um, advantages over doing it even on, you know, a dedicated rendering station. So it shows here it would be 192 times faster using the, the rendering service versus um, a two-core desktop workstation. I know a lot of people, um, especially like engineers and designers, are using something a little more robust. Um, but even something like a 16-core rendering farm, it'll take 13 minutes to, to run this particular one, while as it'll only take three and a half minutes um, by using the rendering services. Once you go ahead and run through this, they get uploaded here in your personal gallery. If you want to take a look at some of these, some of these are just some ones I ran yesterday. These are Revit models, um, and these look pretty remarkable. Um, GoToWebinar probably doesn't send this at like 100% resolution, but if you're looking at them like I am right now, uh, it's pretty amazing. So all of your uh, previous ones show up in this particular gallery. You can go ahead and share these with colleagues, uh, or you can share them to the public gallery, which is very cool. So here are just a couple of renderings from um, some users that posted them on the Autodesk gallery that um, I thought were pretty interesting. Um, so this is actually marble, which is really cool. And uh, I thought this was actually a photo when I first saw it, but actually <laughs> it's a rendering that someone did. So very cool for that indeed. So in summary, uh, the cloud can be used as a huge time saver. Uh, program improvements increase productivity by 10, even 15%. So you know when they say or when they do an improvement within from one version to another, those could increase productivity. But by using the cloud, you can increase productivity in multiples, which is crazy. So as you saw, it's like all over 100 times faster than using a normal workstation. Uh, you can also free up your processing power. By computing in the cloud, uh, you don't have to waste your time waiting for your workstation to complete calculations. You can run more than one at a time. Uh, you can actually do other things while waiting. And finally, uh, you can collaborate efficiently without having to worry about file compatibility, size, or even where you are. Uh, you can access all of your A360 libraries straight through your smartphone. 
So those are only a few of the uh, cloud-enabled applications that Audness provides. There are plenty more, um, but those are just the ones we decided to go over today. If you have any questions in regards to that, um, some of the other ones, go ahead and express that in either the question box that you have in GoToWebinar or even in the comments of the survey at the end of this presentation. So um, recommended next steps. Uh, you all have 100 cloud credits. Go ahead and spend them. They're free. Might as well do it, right? Um, so try it for yourself. Run a simulation on your local machine uh, versus the cloud. The amount that you're going to spend on certain simulations, it depends on its complexity. It's not a hard um, metric, but usually it's within reason, and you can run multiple simulations on this first initial 100 cloud credit store that you have. Let's go ahead and open it up to Q&A. So one thing I wanted to point out, Nigel, um, is that the 100 cloud credits, that's per seat. So for those of you uh, that own suites, it's 100 cloud credits per seat. So if you have five seats, um, you would then, in theory, have 500 cloud credits. Correct. Um, and your starter cloud credits are not transferable, but if you do buy cloud credits as like a company, um, you can share those among the people associated with your contract. Correct. Uh, and then also worth pointing out is the 25 gigabytes you mentioned is as well worth seats, are related to the number of seats you own. So if you... Uh, don't, if your user account, your Autodesk user account is not tied to a seat of software, um, your account will have five gigabytes of storage space. Correct. But if it is tied to a seat of software, you'll have 25 gigabytes. Can you, can you um, go over a little bit on purchasing additional cloud credit? Is that some a contract manager has to do, a software uh, for, um, coordinator has to do, or, or is that something that, how, how, how is that done? That's a great question, Andy. The best way to do that, go ahead and contact your Cativ representative. Uh, we'll be more than happy to help you. Uh, we'll get you a quote for what that's going to cost you, give you your options based on the, the number of credits you buy. Um, of course, and like anything else, the more cloud credits you buy, the cheaper they are. Uh, but they do start off at roughly a dollar per credit. Yeah, and like I said before, you can buy them in multiples of 100 only. And then once they, uh, they are purchased, they're on your account, you can go ahead and distribute those amongst your users. Looks like here someone asked about um, the differences between Vault and A360. So um, the advantage that you have with A360 versus Vault, well, let's put it this way. What Autodesk gives you is they give you like a bunch of tools, and you can use the right tool for the situation. In some cases, Vault might be the right tool for you. In some cases, A360 might be the right tool. If you have people in the field looking at these files and then doing markups, or you know they need to reference the particular parts or assemblies, um, A360 is probably a little bit better. They don't need to have access to the network. Um, they don't have to carry their laptop around. And they can just view it from either their tablet or their smartphone. Great. So yeah. to expand on that a little bit, um, A360 is a tool meant more for collaborating, uh, especially with teams that may be working remotely. Uh, it's easier to share, transfer files, comments, and markup on those files, uh, whereas Vault is more about data integrity, uh, making sure that we don't have multiple users accessing or modifying the same file at the same time. Um, and Vault is also not a cloud application, so that does run local to uh, your facility. Correct. Um, and it looks like one came in here from Bert. Um, can I use Vault and A360 without duplicate parts, Rich? Um, so we may need you to elaborate a little more on that question, Bert. Um, you would be able to certainly use Vault, and you could upload those files into A360, but there would be no connection between the two. Uh, so if you were looking to, say, maybe uh, share a file quickly with someone that's um, either in a different facility or in a different state, country, uh, you can certainly do that via A360, uh, but there, there is no connection to the vault. We have another question here from Bert. Uh, if I have an assembly, I check it out, then use A360. Yeah, so I think he's just expanding on his prior question. Um, Bert, that workflow would certainly work. You could check your assembly out of Vault, uh, maybe even check that out as a um, pack and go, and then upload that into A360 to share that with other users. Correct. Yeah, and like Bert said, uh, using Dropbox made it a mess. Yeah, um, that's definitely some of the advantages that A360 has over things like Dropbox and Google Drive. Um, is A360 is built around these particular file types, so it becomes a lot easier for it to be able to translate those and for you to be able to move those between you and your colleagues. Um, so, Bert, if you have any um, other questions, uh, we can go ahead and get into contact with you in regards to um, some of your specific needs here. 
uh, and your questions for Vault and A360. Um, I'll definitely get in touch with you after this presentation. So again, we'd like to remind you to stay connected uh, with Kativ, whether it be via the Kativ blog, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or LinkedIn. Uh, we're going to post this session here on YouTube shortly after the webcast is over. It looks like we'll see you guys next week.